It was said in a film of the 1980s called Videodrome that the television screen is the retina of the mind's eye. That was a very mystical statement to come from a, f effectively a horror, horror movie, Videodrome, where people, people started getting sucked into some kind of hallucinogenic nightmare created by a signal on VHS tapes or something. But at any rate, where we're at with our present day society is the screen has occupied even more of a prominent place in people's lives. The screen is the retina of the mind's eye. The mind meaning the mind of humanity, not just your own mind, but the shared mind. You know, Your mind is not an island, okay? You're part of the group mind, no matter how much you want to fight it. And the fact is, everybody's even more a part of the group mind now through the development of a proto-nuosphere, or as some would say, noosphere, uh, which is a shared field of intelligence, like a morphogenetic field of the mind. That it, why do people harp on certain memes? Like, give, I can't give you a really ready example. The first thing that stuck, popped into my mind was conspiracy theories and things like that. I mean, people are developing a worldview that is postmodern for sure but also is trying to take account of all other times, all history. There are a lot of smart people alive today. And what we're striving to do with these rants and these expressions is we're striving to probe into that place within you, within all of us, that is developing a social conscience, a world consciousness, developing a power of sight, like a sixth sense. Why wouldn't humanity eventually evolve into having such a sense? We can call it intuition, we can call it insight, we can call it visionary capacity, but humanity has it. Come on. This is our sentience expressing in a more common form. If we can get insight that applies to everybody on the planet, like MLK or Gandhi or, or others, God, you, 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 it's, you're, you know, it's incumbent upon you to share that if you're that person or a such person. And so what does the internet do for people? It turns everybody into a Gandhi or a Martin Luther King in about 10 seconds. You can take a stand on something in the world media, in the world press, through the social interactions on your Facebook and your Twitter, like the President of the United States does. It changes world markets with a 180 character tweet. So that means the field of consciousness is now united in a way through the noosphere or proto-noosphere mediated by the internet, by the World Wide Web, but it's training us to have world consciousness. It's training us to have a care for the rest of humanity and to have an opinion and a stand on the issues of the day. So without that, Civics is, use, is useless. Thomas Jefferson made that plain. If you don't have an informed populace, you can't have a democracy. Come on, hello. If there's disinformation everywhere, if there's disinformation everywhere, there's no democracy. And there's no, there's, there, there's, there's no chance for an egalitarian order because somebody has managed to polarize the world spirit, the world soul, the world mind into a frenzy of distrust and mistrust between many factional players. Some have said this guitar may overwhelm your capacity to understand where I'm coming from or what I'm trying to say, but listen, it's not true. We're massaging your soul right now with truths that you already know to be true, but we're helping you come to terms with them so that there is a much greater cognizance of where we stand in history and where history is ending and the future is beginning. So music and culture and ideas are back in style, everybody. Especially when you have emptiness, vacuity in the minds of so many others and lack of insight. 
lack of enduring economic principles, and I don't mean principles only in terms of costs and margins and that kind of thing. I mean principles like moral principles. You have to have economic principles if you want to survive beyond a few generations of illicit gain on the markets of the time through micro-trading and the like. We cannot continue these derivatives markets which essentially make our stock markets into a gambling casino day in and day out. 24-7-365. Don't subscribe to False Economy. Do not give into the war mentality. Don't, there are no enemies. There's only one humanity. There's only one love. Give up on everything but those precepts and you'll be golden. Because consciousness, our consciousness, is a golden egg. And the goose that's coming out of there can take you places. It's a phoenix, actually. There's a phoenix coming out of the golden egg of human consciousness and is taking us beyond the ashes of the old and into the fire of the new. So, I've been encouraged to see you through that eye of the needle by the angels themselves, and that's why I'm here. I've been asked to come and serve all of you. That's where we are now. I'm here for you, and I'm not going to stop growing that new world that we are all begging God to dispense upon humanity. There's just no other pact that I can make with myself or with this family called humanity. It's a covenant. And the only way to live in grace is to have a covenant with God. Or goddess. Or both. And none at all, because when you wed God and goddess, you get you. That's what you're made of. You're made of God and goddess. Energy. There's nothing but that in the universe. Therefore, we're all divine, we're made of divine stuff, and we have a divine mission every time we come into a body, to honor our father and mother, and I don't mean our birth father and mother, I mean Father Sky and Mother Earth. Let us honor our innate divinity as the third force born of these two. Praise the Most High in all.